Hey everybody, it's Goddess Jillian and welcome to my infrared sauna vlog. This is where I sit in my infrared sauna and sweat and detox and meditate and get clarity. And I talk about things that are important to me spiritually for my spiritual evolution and growth and also to keep my head on straight, keep my focus so I can manifest all good things in my life. And I also do it because I'm hopeful that what I talk about in here is helpful to other people, right? So, today I, today I don't have on a shirt, but oh well. <laughs> have a towel. <laughs> anyway, um, so today I'm continuing my um, discussion about narcissists and narcissism. And it's been a journey for me because I had a two-year relationship with a really violent narcissist. And so I just wanted to help myself keep clear and focused and not fall into that same trap because I believe that, you know, the planet is being inundated, sort of like a friggin' swarm of demons came down and inhabited the humans here to turn them into narcissists and sociopaths and they basically attack other people here to bring their vibration down. It's a terrible thing, but there's never been more <laughs> narcissistic and sociopathic people on the planet than there are today. So sometimes you don't survive narcissistic abuse or uh, sociopathic abuse, especially when it's the violent kind. And so I'm doing this because I really took a beating with it. And I just want to make sure that I give the information out there to others to make sure that they can stay safe and, and all of that. So previous, I, I, I'm doing a series on this and the previous episodes are about recognizing how a narcissist will come at you when they first meet you and it's contrary to what a lot of information is on the, on the um, web about how they're exhibitionists and blah, blah, blah. But, um, and so you go back and look at those so that you can really see how to spot them from the get go, but also their tactics right at the beginning of a relationship when they're trying to hook you, right? So I've also started to do, I mean, a lot of this is coming from my own experience, which was pretty significant, but also I'm doing research so that I can add in places where I've got missing information. And what I've found out is that there are a bunch of different types of narcissists and they exhibit different behaviors with the same goal in mind. Okay. So, and what I realized also is that they can sometimes take on multiple different behaviors of the different types of narcissists so that it's not always clear and it's not always, you know, a concise one way because they can take on the traits of almost all the different types of narcissists. And that's what the person that I was involved with did. He exhibited traits from all the different types of narcissists. So I want to go through them. I'm going to try to be concise and you can expand on this information as well, because I'm obviously not going to list every single type of thing they might do. Um, because we just don't have the time. Okay. So the first, and I think more, most commonly recognized type of narcissist is the exhibitionist. And this is a person that's always got to be the center of attention. They're always exaggerating their accomplishments and things they've done. And they, um, always have to be in the spotlight and they usually, uh, try to attract people that will give them willingly adulation. So they have sometimes a whole bunch of people, friends and or lovers that or romantic partners that will give them the attention and adulation that they seek. Right. And these types of narcissists are, this is what you read about when you read the definition of narcissist online or whatever. And they react really badly when they don't get the attention or the, um, praise that they're looking for all the time. Okay. But that's, that's really kind of an obvious trait. And you can look at somebody and go, look at that braggart, what a jerk or whatever. Okay. Another type of not so well known narcissist is the closet narcissist. Okay. This person thinks all the things that the regular exhibitionist narcissist narcissist thinks, but about themselves, but they don't wholly exhibit it out to the world. They kind of keep it to themselves and they still probably, 
um, a lot of times react badly when they don't get the attention that they crave, but it's a more of a passive aggressive um, type of behavior where they may pout or, you know, be, um, you know, depressed because they didn't get the attention that they so need and so seek. But it's not always clear why they're doing that, right? And so that's not as easy to spot. And, um, but they, they still uh, exhibit behaviors that are very unattractive when they don't get the attention and the adulation that they crave and believe they deserve. And that's the critical thing. These creatures, they really have very little conscience left. And so they don't care, you know, th about any of their actions and how they may affect other people. They are only concerned with themselves and getting the attention and the adulation that they feel they deserve. Okay. Now, going on from there. And, and these types of narcissists, while no narcissist is good or healthy for you, because you are always going to be the one that has to pay the price. Um, if you were under their spell or if they have their hooks in you or whatever, but you know, they can, you can live with one of these creatures without basically, you know, dying or having your life fall apart, but it will take a toll in time. And I've seen that a lot of time narcissistic behavior, narcissists will escalate into other types of narcissistic behavior if they don't get what they desire from you. So that being said, the third type, and there are six types that I'm going to cover today. The third type is the toxic narcissist. Now this creature is one that just like the others craves the adulation and attention and praise and all that, that the others do. But if they don't get it and, and, and they also try to get it by causing drama, always causing drama, whatever, however they can do it, causing drama. So they, they get almost like a petulant child acting out and behaving badly. So they get attention kind of like that behavior and a toxic narcissist can be a lot more detrimental in terms of their reactions than the others. Okay. And these ones you'll, you'll, you'll see their behavior. You'll be, you'll be very aware after a time because it doesn't stop. It's just constant, constant drama. And then, you know, the cycle begins again. The next type of narcissist is the bullying narcissist. And this is where we start to get into really sketchy behavior because if they don't get the adulation or the adulation or the attention or the whatever, the praise that they lo are looking for, they will bully it out of you. Okay. And I want to mention this too, because if they feel like they're being threatened or called out on their BS, any of them, um, is when you'll see reactions. Okay. So it's not only them getting attention, it's that, um, or getting the praise and adulation that they so feel they deserve. But if they feel like you're, um, coming, becoming aware of the, the dark malevolent creature that they are, and you say, dude, what the hell, you know, why did you do that? They will come back in a really aggressive and bullying nature to, and, and deflect and put all of their, you know, feeling of being accused back on you. And a bullying narcissist is really scary because they can, um, intimidate and use aggressive, uh, you know, behaviors to try to, to get you to acquiesce to their needs. And, and that includes, um, being very, very, very verbally abusive and try to put you down so that they can feel better. Right. And that I think is across the board with narcissists because in order to make them feel better, unless you're constantly praising them, they tend to try to make you feel bad. Okay. However, that even that, even in the, even in the closet narcissist passive aggressively making you feel bad because you didn't give them the praise that they so think they deserve. Right. Okay. That's a really scary narcissist. The bullying one, one you want to run, all of them you want to run from. If once you realize that, that this is the creature that they are next comes up is, and this one is very hard because these, these creatures are highly adept at manipulation. Very, very, very highly adept manipulators, right? So 
they use all types of techniques to manipulate you into giving them and feeding them the energy that they need, right? Like vampires. Okay, so the next one, this one is um, very tricky, very, very tricky because what they use is seduction to take control of their victims and their prey. They will, and they are very, they tend to be very charming, very charming, and they will use all of their charming and, you know, uh, like sexy abilities, and this is women or men, to get you into their grip. And that just doesn't just mean um, getting you into bed with them, because that is one of their goals, because that's the way they can exert control over you, because they're usually very adept in the bedroom and um, are <laughs> can very, you know, very much take control of you by getting you to open up to them physically and sexually, right? And um, most of the time with a seductive narcissist, they don't wait very long for you to acquiesce. If they don't think you're going to fall into the sack with them, they're on to the next, right? So that's pretty easy to see. But it's <laughs> interesting because these creatures have an amazing ability to glamour people into falling in love and falling into bed with them. All of them do. It's amazing. It's like, how the hell did, like, once you've been through it, you're like, what the hell happened to me that I fell for this crap? But while you're in it, it's like you get glamored like a vampire, like, oh yeah, ha. Huh. It's ridiculous. But I'm telling you, it's something to be really aware of because, Believe me, you, you don't always see it coming. So these are things that you have to be incredibly aware of because they're everywhere. It's like zombie land or vampire land. So the last one and the most scary one is the psychopathic narcissist. Now this creature is literally violent, unstable, and scary. And if they feel in any way threatened or called out on their behavior, they will not only deflect and turn it back on you in a violent verbal manner, but also potentially physically violent manner. And this is the type of narcissist that most serial killers are. Okay. And this is really dangerous. I mean, I mean, really, really dangerous. And I was in a relationship with what I believe a, a psychotic or psychopathic narcissist because I was subject to a lot of physical abuse, verbal abuse, bullying, but as well as the seductive um, narcissistic characteristics, characteristics as well as the um, closet being a passive, very passive aggressive. So this creature that I was involved in had all the traits of all of them and they escalated from the time we met. Um, and as if you've listened to the previous episodes, they, he got me hooked in with this um, love bombing technique. And I was blindsided by it because I was like, damn, this is an amazing person. Turns out the scariest person I've ever met in my life. Okay. And it's because their behavior escalated, started out in a passive aggressive way, turned into a verbally abusive and bullying way. And, and for sure, a seductive way, they would always be able to get me to come back by their seductive powers, which like an idiot, I, you know, I didn't have all this information then. Okay. Now I do. I'm like, Oh hell no. But it ended up being starting to be violent and somehow a psychotic or, or a psychopathic narcissist will turn it around so that all of them will turn it around so that somehow you feel like it was your fault that they reached that level of anger and aggression and violence because of something that you did not because of their own behavior. And a lot of times in my experience, the violence would come when I just even started to hint at asking why they're doing a certain thing or why they behaved a certain way. And they would immediately turn around, deflect, and start accusing me of the same or worse behavior, which I was like, wait a minute, I, I didn't do any of that stuff. What, what are you talking about? But as soon as you, and I mean, as soon as you start to stand up for yourself, the, the, their, um, behavior becomes instantly more aggressive and turns violent 
And that's when you have to really, really, really understand that your life is in danger. And if you make it through that episode of violence and craziness, they will turn around in the next minute or the next day or whatever and somehow try to convince you, and they're so good at this, that they didn't do anything wrong. And a lot of times it's because they won't even acknowledge it. And so you go, okay, well, did that even really happen? Or I must have been at fault somehow because they're so unwilling to recognize their behavior as if it never even happened that you have to think, wait, and you start to question your own sanity. And are you imagining things or are you the crazy one? There's all sorts of these things. I and mean, I'll get into some deeper little techniques to specifics in the next few episodes of, about how these things happen. But it literally makes you feel like you're losing your mind. And I'm telling you out there in the world from firsthand experience that if I'd stayed in this relationship, I would eventually be dead. And there were some incidences where accidentally violent things happened where I could have been really badly injured and or maybe even killed. And um, for sure, I sustained significant physical injury to the point where I had to have surgery because of my interactions with this creature, this malevolent monster. Okay. So please understand all these different types of narcissistic people and their behaviors, because even if you get one of the more benign ones, it's not benign because most of the time their behavior will escalate into these other types of narcissistic, narcissistic behaviors and they will all end badly for you because at the very least you will become emotionally depleted to the point that you can no longer carry on your normal life. You can no longer manifest and create positive things in your life because you're so absorbed with the absolute insanity that's going on in your relationship. And I'm telling you this, aside from the violent episodes and all that stuff, the way this person made me feel, they made me, I'm a confident person. I'm confident in my abilities. I'm confident in a whole lot of things. This person constantly and chronically made me feel less than, made me feel unworthy or at least attempted to. But when you're in a relationship like this and it's constant hammering and, and in a way that is not always straightforward. So you don't always say, Oh, you asshole. You're just being a jerk to try to make me feel bad. You don't always see it. It comes blindsided and you're like, wait, and then you think about it and you think, Oh my God, am I, am I really less than, am I really not as whatever? or not as adept or not as qualified or not as, you know, talented or not as beautiful or not as anything. I mean, it is so dark and so scary, but you get lost in it and you lose your way and you question everything and you think at least for moments. And sometimes you get into a phase of really thinking that you are less than, and you don't deserve anything but this type of treatment. And it is awful. Okay, I know I covered a lot and we went really long, but I just wanted to see all this information in because it's so critical, really important. Okay, so, but thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you watching. I'm going to rewatch this just so I can remember all these things so that I never fall prey to one of these monsters again, ever. And I'm, I'm telling you, at this point in my life, I, there's like a, any transgressions or any like games or BS, I'm out the door. Forget it. I'd rather be alone and love love myself so much than be with somebody that's going to take my energy and make me feel bad. Okay. Love yourself more, please <laughs> save yourself. Okay. From trauma, drama, heartache, and sometimes even death. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please subscribe. I, it made so much to me if I know that I'm helping other people because I know I'm helping myself. Okay. So but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And oh,